Good afternoon and welcome to the fourth episode of Work That Matters, the wonderful new podcast, although I'm not going to be able to keep calling it new for much longer. <laughs> the, the new podcast featuring Leslie Israel. The first three episodes focused on some pretty heavy issues, as many of you know, but this time around, we're going to stop and smell the roses a little bit, as the saying goes. Rather than talking shop, we're going to talk family, because even though the show is called Work That Matters, family is the most important work of all. And I know Leslie Israel, our host, would agree with that. And wouldn't you know it, we have Leslie on the line right now, joining us from beautiful Easton, Maryland. How is the weather out there today, Leslie? Beautiful. Beautiful. But before we jump into the questions, I want to make sure that I, and of course our listeners out there, have the lay of the land and they know exactly what we're talking about when we're talking about it. So let's establish first your family tree, or at least the most recent branches and leaves on your family tree. This way everyone will have a frame of reference when we discuss the many names and personalities in the family themed episode. So you married Fred Israel in 1960 and gave birth to Herman Allen and um, that was in 1961 and he was known as Hal of course. Right. And two years later, you had Sanford Lawrence, better known. Well, actually, 11 months later. 11 months later. My grandmother was wrong. You can't two get pregnant while you're nursing. <laughs> oh, so you had Sanford Lawrence 11 months later, and he's better known as Sandy. Yeah. Hal married Donna. Sandy married Jennifer. Sandy and Jennifer had three children, Jason, Jessica, and Caitlin, or Jake, right. Jesse, and Katie for short. Hal and Donna had two children, Evan and Ryan. And tragically, Ryan did not get to meet his dad in the flesh because, as we discussed in the last episode, Hal passed away some years ago. And Ryan was... Hal passed away before Ryan was born. Yeah. So he was born not too long after his dad passed. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, all right, so that... That sets the stage for everything. So now, no, let's... it's a shame because both neither boy knew their fathers. One was two years old. That's and right. One was born after he was dead. Yeah, if he was only two, then. He'd be, but yeah. yeah. Well, that's um. Well, it wasn't really two. It was one. One. Yeah. Wow. Okay. One, yeah. I want to open with this. Before Fred Israel, the love of your life was Gene Kelly. There must be a good story behind this one, so let's hear it. <laughs> well, my pa- my father had was a journalist, and amongst his papers, he had the Washington Bureau of Variety, which is show business newspaper. And there was a party at the Motion Picture Association of America, which is in Washington, and it's a film. And they were showing, I don't know whether it was Singing in the Rain, but it was one of Gene Kelly's movies, and I was, I don't know, 10 or 12, but my parents took me to it, and Gene Kelly hugged me. Oh, <laughs> and I said, I fell in love with him. Yeah. First man I ever truly loved. He'd forgotten it 10 minutes later, but I remember it. You know, 70 years later. Yeah, it lasted, lasted your whole life. Well, yeah. that's, that's amazing. Now, Mr. Kelly aside, the next and true love of your life was Fred Israel. Uh, and you've mentioned him a lot in past episodes of this podcast. But now let's hear about who he really is. Who is Fred? What did he do for a living? He must be one pretty special guy to uh, woo you away from. He's a special guy. He's a lawyer. When I married him, he was he had been a practicing marketing consultant, government contract marketing consultant hmm. to clients. And then he went to law school when he was 31, I think, and uh, got his law degree and just transferred all his clients to law clients. My oh. uncle, who had a big law firm and ultimately became president of the American Bar Association, um, said, well, Fred, you know, when he graduates, he can come into my firm in Philadelphia. And Fred said, no, I've got my clients. And, you know, they just, he transferred them from government marketing clients to government contract law clients. Yeah. 
Because I'm almost all the because I'm almost all the Department of Defense. Right, right. I think the real reason I fell in love with Fred is that he was smarter than I was. He was the smartest man I knew. Right. He was always smart. He was always entertaining. He was never boring. And of course, I thought he was sexy. <laughs> That's an important part of it. <laughs> you and know, his he... parents were both immigrants this country so oh, yeah. they didn't have the same background yeah they had both come from this they actually came from the same village in what was then the Soviet Union mm-hmm. but they really I guess they probably might have known one another but they, they hooked up here in the United States and oh. that's when they got married that's interesting. And you said you said he was the smartest person you knew. And, you know, he would have to be pretty darn smart in order to admit, to make that pivot from marketing consulting to law and maintain all of his clients in the process. Oh, and he did. Amazing. That's, that's so great. Love to hear stories like that. Now, you've said on the show before that you were raised, and you even alluded to this a couple of questions ago, but you were raised by Republican journalist parents. Can you tell me a little bit about your own upbringing and what that was like? Did it, it, did it influence your own career path or your own experience oh, yeah. as a family woman? I grew up in Washington. I went all through public school. It was much not until the end of my junior year when the Brown decision came down that we discovered that Washington's capital had a legally segregated school system, and they couldn't integrate it all by September. So I went through 12 years in a segregated high school, you know, public school system. Right. But uh, And then um, before I went to college. But my parents were very, very interesting people. They were loving parents. And um, because they were journalists, we lived an interesting life because, you know, life was more than just getting up and going to the store in the morning. Yeah. They, you know, they were very interesting people and they were fun. That sounds great. And they were smart. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. So I liked it. Yeah. That's great. And yeah. my mother, after my, fa- my father, thank God, walked me down the aisle he had a second heart attack four months after we were married and died. Oh. In those days, there were no bypasses, stints, yeah. papers, and he died. So Did he never, you know, he never, as I said, my kids never knew him, and, he, he, you know, Fred Rory never really got to know him because mm-hmm. he died very soon. Wow. At least he was able to walk you down the aisle. Did you, oh, yeah, uh, but then my mother lived to be 93 and had a very exciting career after she left journalism because the government founded the National Endowment for the Arts, mm-hmm. and she was appointed the first chairman with Nancy Hanks, and mother was the press secretary. So we had a very glamorous, I because, you know, I, I, I'd grown up with variety, so I knew a lot about show business. Yeah. Fred probably remembers the first time he took me to the National Theater. There was no Kennedy Center then. And the uh, manager, we walked in and he said, Leslie, I didn't know you were coming tonight. Where are you sitting? And we had balcony seats. And Scott said, oh, you can't sit there. And he put us in the house seats, which are oh, wow. the that are out. But, um, it, you know, it, it, Fred was a fascinating and still is. I've yeah. never, never regretted it. Yeah. Now, fast forward later in life, when you were stationed in places like Bosnia for extended periods, did, uh, well, you've said that your family did not come with you. So how long were you away from them at that time? Well, there was only one point when I was away a long time, and that, or, you know, relatively long time, and that was my first time in Bosnia when I was there for, I don't remember, four or five months. What I did was, because I was involved in democracy, I was helping organize the first election, helping them write their election laws and then organize it, and then I would go back afterwards and, you know, observe elections, but I went to elections. I did elections all over the country and then all all over the world, and then eventually, um, because... The, the, the American government did mostly Eastern Europe, centered Eastern Europe and Central Asia. Right. Um, so I went primarily, you know, 
former Soviet Union, Eastern Europe, that part. You've said that the best years of your life were the early years with Fred and the kids. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what made those days so special? What was what was your ordinary day like back then? Well, in those days when the kids were small, we were all stay-at-home moms. Yeah. In, that, in those days. I, you know, I, I went to cooking school during them when they were in school, but okay. that's about the size of it. And then <laughs> went into journalism, and I said, gave that up because, uh, well, I did that was before I was married, but then I joined, you know, I got into politics, had been in politics all my life, and I opened my own political, I was, was working with a consulting firm, and I ordered, within the firm, I ordered my, I opened my own political consulting firm. Politics Inc. Because, you know, we were, you know, you couldn't have... Yeah, we represented labor unions, and you know some of them would separate. One can't sell back one candidate and some another, and so I, you know, would. So I started a separate corporate firm so that you know, I wasn't competing with what some of my clients might not approve of. Right, right. That makes sense. Okay. So you've said that your family vacations were usually in Chesapeake Bay. Um, so what did an Israel family vacation look like exactly in Chesapeake Bay? Well, it was not so much in this, you know, was, you know, Atlantic City. Uh, you know, mm. my mother was from Philadelphia, and we went down to deal New Jersey. We spent a lot of time in New Jersey and the beach, that kind of thing. Yeah. And, of course, because there was not air conditioning and there was polio, I spent my summers at camp in Maine. And you, you've mentioned um, later on how you had sailing vacations. You guys did a lot of sailing? Well, that's after I married Fred. Yeah. And we, at some point, we bought a boat, and then we went to sailing school. Oh, <laughs> and really? learned to sail it. So, um, and we just loved it. The first time I was overseas, and we chartered a boat, it was a shock because a lot of the rules are different, you know, in, in the United States, it's red on the red side, red right returning, and in these overseas places, it was left returning. Yeah. <laughs> red, red left returning. So right. I had learned some different things, but, okay. but I loved it. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Your sons, Sandy and Hal, um, were they very, very different from one another personality-wise as kids? Well, they were different in one special way. Hal was HDH, ADHD before that was a diagnosis. Right. These were the kids who couldn't shut up and sit down. Okay. <laughs> so he didn't, you know, he older when he dropped out. Let, let me give you the bottom line. When he graduated from Yale Law School, Fred said, you're probably the only graduate of Yale Law who never finished high school. And Hal said, Pop, as you recall, I never finished junior high school. Wow. But we had good friends in the, at Georgetown, which is where Fred had gone to law school. Yeah. And um, some of them got, they said, well, we can't admit him, but we'll let him take summer courses. Right. And he got straight, he had taken the GEDs and all that stuff. And he got straight A's. And they said, well, we still can't admit him, but we'll let him take first semester courses. And he still got straight A's. So they admitted him with retroactive credit. And when he graduated from Georgetown, at that point at least, they gave five medals of honor to graduating seniors. He got two of them. Wow. And then he went to Yale Law. Amazing. My parents had both gone, you know, to Penn, and my uncle was a lawyer and that kind of thing, but uh, this is what he wanted, and it's, he turned out very well. Very and he, when he died, it was painless, but an accident. Yes, uh, in the water he, at the right, time, in the hot tub. Yeah, he was in a, in a hot tub. Yeah. If he'd known anything, all he had to do was lift his head. Yeah. But uh, he was... You know, he had a seizure because of the, the old days, and uh, he just drowned in his hot tub. Right. Tragic. Uh, now, Tragic. your grandkids, Evan, Ryan, Jason, Jesse, and Katie, 
do they share a lot of characteristics with their respective dads? Uh, now's, by the way, now's your big chance to brag about them, and no one can say a word. So make the most of it, Granny. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, Katie, Jessica, Evan, and Ryan, and they are all fabulous. And uh, everybody's in now in college or graduate school. Jake's in grad school, okay. and uh, but and all you know leading perfectly normal, healthy lives, doing well, and we'll see what happens. I don't have, you know, nobody's married yet. I don't have grades, but yeah. we'll see. Um, you are incredibly active in the Jewish community, Leslie. You've traveled the world. Your last name is Israel. I'm sorry, yes, but I have to ask. Every time I go to Israel, they look at me and say, really? <laughs> when I get to immigration. <laughs> You're like the queen of Israel. <laughs> yeah. So you, so you've been, that was going to be my question. Is So you've been to Israel. How many times oh, have you gone and what was that like? Uh, many times. I did a lot of travel because I did all this uh, stuff all over the world and yeah, democracy stuff. So when you were in Israel, was it business or pleasure or both? Both. Nice. Sounds good. And now... And I was involved in Jewish organizations, and I had board meetings, and, you know, the Andes, primarily the Anti-Defamation League, and we would have a lot of meetings in Israel. Yeah, of course. And what what do you think about the state of Israel today, What with the condition of Israel? What are your I feelings? I think it's pretty good. It's a strong state. There are a lot of issues, of course. Uh, the Palestinians, the Israelis, don't have a problem. Mostly they're fine, but, you know, there's still, you know, there's, there's some obviously some discrepancies there yeah but it's a very democratic country yeah and I'm proud of it good that's great so now for the personality power round to end the interview I'm going I'm going we've never done this on the show before with you of course but I'm going to rapidly fire some preference choices at you and I want you to answer one or the other without giving it too much thought you ready mm-hmm. okay Favorite meal? I like almost everything, <laughs> providing there are no capers. Okay. I, 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 you know, I prefer a hamburger to a, to a steak, and I like chicken, and I like fish. And, yeah. You know, I, I'm not a caper uh, fan either, by the way. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. But, and I like, you know, I like a lot of international foods. We love to go to Indian restaurants or yeah. Mexican restaurants or whatever. Favorite song? Singing in the Rain, maybe, because I fell in love with Gene Kelly. I had a feeling you were going to say that one. <laughs> Would that be the answer for favorite movie? Mm, yeah, probably. I, I don't know that I had a favorite movie, because um, I saw everything back in the day when, because, yeah. you know, that's the world I grew up in. Right, right. What is your favorite color? Hmm, blue. Blue? I don't know that I have a really, really favorite color. That's what the pop is in my head. Right, right. Okay, sailing or skiing? Sailing. Bill Clinton or Barack Obama? I'm, I'm a big Democrat, so I like them both. Yeah, okay. Bush 41 or Bush 43? Uh, we're both okay presidents. Okay. Not my party. Yeah. You know, not my place on the issues, but they were decent presidents. They were honest, like I said. Yeah, exactly. They were not wrong. The best compliment that a person can give Leslie Israel would be what? <sighs> You're smart. Are you telling me that? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, well, you. You yeah. are smart. That's, that's <laughs> so good. I'd like them to be able to say, oh, you're so skinny now, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> glass half empty or glass half full? Oh, I don't know. Are you an optimist I mean, or a pessimist? Express, what do you think? That's an expression. Uh, you know, if somebody were to say, I'd say glass half full because that's optimistic. Yeah, well... That was a fun interview. That about wraps this one up. And uh, I know we, like I said before, we took a little bit of a detour in this one. Had a little bit, of, had a little bit of fun. Not that we don't normally, but we always talk about such heavy issues, politics, and things like that, and uh, war. And so this was a nice, a nice little um, uh, side yeah, journey. No, it's, it's, Get to know it a little bit. Very nice one. 
<laughs> yeah, it was fun. Get to know a little bit more about you and the listeners out there will really get a different angle, a different dimension on who Leslie Israel is and what your life was like and what led you to be the person that you are today and the inspiration to people that you are, frankly. So very good. This is Work That Matters. Have a great evening, Leslie. Thank you very much.